Hi everybody, today we're going to do something a little bit different than normal. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my home theater setup, which is very humble and nothing too extravagant, but fun. And then I'm going to show you some cool gadgets that I've ran across recently, two of which you can see on your screen. And then we're going to talk a little bit about VHD. I've decided to get back into VHD. I found an outlet for VHD, so I'm going to show you that as well. So let's get rolling, dudes. So my first display unit is a BenQ projector. This is a DLP and it does do 3D, which is very cool. I don't know the model number off the top of my head, but I'll look it up and put it down in the description. My second display unit is this 42 inch plasma RCA TV, and I believe it has mostly Samsung guts in it. Got this in 2010. And I just love the contrast of plasma, so I continue to use it. For my front main speakers, I have these Tower Athenas. And Athena went out of business, but before they did, I managed to grab a set of Athena speakers. These are wonderful. They're a little lacking in bass, but where it lacks in bass, it definitely picks up in clarity. There are two subwoofers in my setup. And the reason for that is I wanted to have a sub set up for the center channel as well. That way vocals don't always sound like a tinny little box in the center of my listening environment. So I have two. The Velodyne handles the bass for the center channel and this Polk Audio one handles the bass for the 5.1 or the 0.1 LFE channel. My center channel and surround speakers are really just generic speakers. I don't even know the makes and models of them, but uh, I bought them offline. So this is a like a six inch, I think, center channel. And it hangs just above my screen, which I pull down for movie watching. And the screen is made by Panaview. With the screen pulled down, I get a 74 inch widescreen picture and about a hundred inch if I do a four three aspect ratio picture. Since pulling down the screen tends to cover up my tweeters and block them, I've installed an extra set of tweeters. You can see one hanging out down here below on each speaker and that kind of gets you the high end up underneath the screen when the screen is down. My surround speakers are car speakers and I've spray painted the grills white. To preserve my electronics, I use a smart switch to turn off my power to my entire setup when it's not in use. Here are the entertainment sources here in my home theater. We'll start at the top left and this is a Apple TV. It is not the 4K version, it's the one just behind it. And then we have underneath that a Wii U and an Xbox 360 HD DVD drive, which is connected just to the right of it to this black Xbox 360, one of the later generation models. Above that is the Philips CDI Interactive Player. It is a CDI 470. I've mentioned it on my channel before. To the right of that is the newest edition and most exciting at the moment. Addition to my home theater, this is a National Disc Lord VHD video disc player from Japan. It is a model DP300 and it does have 3D capability. I'm gonna get a remote for it. I don't have the remote yet, but uh, hoping to get it soon. It was sold separately. What I like about this player is the fact that all the labels on the front are in English versus most of these players from Japan have Japanese labels on the front. Just below the VHD player is my Pioneer CLD 2070 laser disc player. This has been reviewed on my channel before and I really like this particular model. It does have auto reverse and it's not particularly tall for having auto reverse and then also it has a front display that covers the drawer and then it also has an optical digital output so you can play DTS laser discs without any type of extra demodulator required. So very cool system there. And then rounding it up as far as making it all work together is my Pioneer VSX 1020. 
And this particular receiver does support 3D, which my system, again, does do 3D. And it does have an upscaler in it. It's not the best in the world. In fact, I'm going to show you an additional upscaler I use, very, very cheaply purchased upscaler, to help out with some of the older analog formats, like these two guys right here. The majority of my components and their features can be controlled by this remote. This is a Harmony 880. These have been around a while, but uh, this guy has been super faithful in helping me add components to my system. Uh, I actually have two of these, and this particular one has a cracked display on it. But uh, a wonderful, wonderful way to control your retro tech is with a Harmony remote. On top of my system up here is the Harmony hub. And this particular unit will control all of your stuff the same way the remote will, except you can use your smartphone as the remote controller. I don't use this as my predominant controller, but it does help out with things like uh, the lights in my basement here happen to be uh, infrared controlled, and the Harmony was taught to turn the lights on and off, which is kind of fun. Hiding over here to the right of my stereo rack and in between the Athena tower speaker, is a PS4, and this PS4 does support Blu-ray, so I can watch Blu-ray movies on it, but it also supports Blu-ray 3D movies, and has done the best job so far of any standalone Blu-ray player that supports 3D that I've used thus far. Hiding behind everything, sitting on the subwoofer here, is my uh, RCA hard drive-based DVD recorder. So it does not have VHS, but it does have uh, a DVD recorder built in, and it does allow you to capture your old analog sources and save them onto the hard drive. I have reviewed this particular unit on my channel before. Running into the front here, not component, but using component cables, is the composite and audio from the uh, VHD player. And then the Laserdisc player is connected in the back and then I have it outputted via component to my receiver with the digital audio output cable there to the right. So it's the coaxial digital output going into my Pioneer receiver. Since this unit is hiding behind everything now and not in the rack, I did purchase this infrared remote extender. So I have the detector on top of the TV and then the uh, output is going right here into this DVD player so I can select the inputs on the front but again it does a wonderful job of upscaling and smoothing out those older video sources and make them really nice and clean to watch. Due to recommendations I saw online I did purchase one of these down converters so this particular unit converts my 120 volt AC line into 100 volts which is what is needed for the Japanese video disc player. Hiding behind the TV is a Nintendo Switch. This is not mine, it is my son's, but we do have it integrated as a part of our system for game playing. Recently I acquired four different formats for Top Gun. As you can see here, I've got Top Gun on Laserdisc. This is the AC3 version. I've got uh, Top Gun on HD DVD. Top Gun on CDI format. Now this is not video CD, it's actually CDI only. And then to the right of that is my VHD version of Top Gun imported from Japan. Sitting below my IKEA made end table is my RCA Selectivision video disc player. It is an SJT 200 series, so it does not have remote control capability, but does do stereo. And sitting atop of that is my preview disc, the $19.98 preview disc, and that particular disc is on my channel. You can watch the chopped up version that I made that includes all the cheesy stuff that they included on that disc. Here is one of the pair of 3D glasses that I own. These are active shutter lenses, uh, LCD, and these operate on power, so they have a rechargeable battery inside. And over the years, I've had people watch 3D movies with me, and no one has complained of a headache. It's just an enjoyable experience watching Blu-ray 3D movies. 
Recently, I acquired this uh, Beta Vision with Beta Scan portable video cassette recorder made from Sears, made by Sears. It's actually a rebadged one. And whoops, I forgot to get the piece back in there when I put it back together. In any case, uh, this particular unit does run. I had to replace some belts on it to get it to run. But unfortunately, it has really poor tracking, it has tracking problems. So it may have some kind of a servo issue going on with it. But uh, I didn't want to make a, a whole video about it because its end results are not that good. But anyway, you guys at least get to see it. It's cool looking. Uh, it has a handle, right? So that makes it portable. Uh, it weighs about 50,000 pounds to carry around. You could probably just use this at home to uh, work out with, lift weights, and you'll get really, really strong lifting this thing. Another amazing unit I acquired recently, which is also super heavy and has a handle and would be great for working out, is uh, this Panasonic video player. So this is an EIAJ black and white reel-to-reel -reel video player, not a recorder, but just a player. So if you worked for a company that maybe you made sales training videos or something, you could just carry this around and uh, hook it up to a television and show off your your stuff. Uh, I did have to put a belt in this thing, actually several belts, and the way it's operated is really clunky. You got this big old controller here that just is making everything happen inside as you turn it. So it requires quite a bit of force to do so and because of the fact it's been sitting around for a million years. So these came out in the late 60s, early 70s. Again, a very heavy unit and uh, but it is portable, right? Super cool. Here is one of the tapes for the Sony reel-to-reel. -reel. This one I found on eBay, and it has a uh, PBS special on it. And the picture quality is absolutely nasty. It's horrible. I don't know why they would even bother back then. But uh, anyway, there's the tapes. And this particular cord I already had, but look at that. That configuration is extremely rare. Seriously, go out and try to Google search for this particular cable and you will have a hard time finding one. I finally did find one and had to spend $30 on it, which is insane for a cable. But whoever had it knew what they had. So um, I'm thinking about starting a company and then just producing these rare cables because they're so hard to find. But again, this Sony videotape player uh, uses this particular power cord as well as one of my 8-track 16 millimeter. Uh, playback units uh, that uses a cartridge also uses that particular cable. Just crazy. Now you may be wondering what is VHD? VHD is essentially a vinyl record that contains a movie. The difference between RCA's CED, which is the blue cartridge on your left, and the VHD, which is the white cartridge on your right, is one of them was cut with grooves and one of them was embedded with code to move the needle across the record. So that made VHD much more sophisticated. It also had track selection right away. RCA later came up with banding to allow you to hit different chapters on their discs, but only the 400 series of players will do the banded chapters on a disc. So VHS, which was also invented by JVC, you can see the VHS, VHD, VHD was intended to also be an audio format, so they had decided to make a vinyl record that would contain digital audio. So essentially, if the CD had never come along, you may have been playing all of your old digital discs on VHD cartridges, which would have been a real pain in the neck to use in your car. But uh, anyway, that was scrapped because Philips came along with the compact disc and JVC said, nah, no thanks. So VHA, which was the audio version, never came along. The only thing that did come along was 3D capability, which I mentioned about my player earlier, and the ability to hook a VHD player to a computer and have VHD games playable from discs through that computer, which is just crazy, but they did it. On your left is an example of a CED disc removed from its sleeve, and to the right is the VHD disc removed from its sleeve, 
And here are some statistics about both that you might find interesting. Operating a VHD player is quite simple. First, you're going to remove the disc from its cardboard sleeve. Look at this one. Isn't this cool? I wish they were all clear like this, but this is the only one I've found so far that's like this. It's a demo disc. So you power up the unit. Door opens. Insert the disc into the front of the player. It pulls the disc out of the cartridge closes the door, spins the disc, and the disc begins playing on screen. When you're finished playing, you simply do the reverse, press eject, insert the cartridge sleeve into the front, the disc is put back into the cartridge, turn the unit off. And here's what's happening inside the player when we insert the disc. Turn on the unit. And then as I Go forward, different tracks or chapters on the disc. You can see that large carriage arm moving in to play them. Okay, now we're done playing. Let's turn it off. Hit eject. Each side of the disc only holds 60 minutes of information, which is the same as CED. So 60 minutes into your film, you have to flip the disc manually over, reinsert it, and begin playing side two. Just like CED, the player has its own removable stylus. So you go to this section here, pull that, open it up. And here is what reads the disc. It's a very sophisticated stylus system. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. So there is your stylus that reads the disc. And what is the picture quality like on VHD? Well, I'm about to show you some clips from VHD and then we'll show a clip from CED as well so you can see the difference between the two pictures. They're both less than 300 lines of resolution. What do you think of this? This is the pit of the disc on the surface. その数が両面でなんと500億もう一つ一つはこれはミクロン1000分の1ミリよりも小さな世界なんだねこの渦巻き状のピットの上をこれまた厚さわずか 0.2 ミクロンの電極を持った電子センサーが 0.2 ミクロンそうその 0.2 ミクロンの電子センサーが正確にトレースして映像や音声信号を電気的に読み取るわけ VHD 方式では他の方式に比べて記録密度がおよそ2倍も高いんだねさっき紹介したランダムアクセスなんかのトリックプレイが両面2時間のディスクでもできるのはこういった仕組みになってるからなんだよ信じられないほど高密度記録の VHD ならではねさらにデジタル信号が記録された AHD ディスクはプロセッサーを接続するだけで本当にびっくりするほど鮮明な静止画像とステレオハイファイサウンドが楽しめるニューメディアまあこれから続々 HD のソフトが登場してくるしすごいですよこれはなんてったって AHD Bye.
And through a company called Syndico, I was able to purchase a VHD player as well as a bunch of discs. And uh, it's not cheap. Actually, you can get these VHD movies each for less than $10 each, most of them less than $5 each. I bought a player for a penny, and unfortunately, it didn't arrive safe, so we're not going to talk about that one. But uh, the one that did arrive safe uh, was still less than $20 uh, in American money and the shipping was insane. It's like well over $100 to have it shipped here. So my recommendation is if you buy one over there and want to get it shipped, get a bunch of stuff together and then ship it versus buying the player and then having these discs shipped separately. Um, I used FedEx and it arrives in about a week. So it's really not too bad. So let's play some really cool music and we're gonna run through these titles of VHD that I've found through Syndico. I'll put an affiliate link to Syndico in the description of this video. I don't even know what I get for affiliating because there's nothing like you have to sign up for. They just give you this link. So anyway, I don't know if I'll gain anything from it or not, but you guys can at least check out the site and uh, do some VHD searches if you'd like. So here we go. Let's look at the movies we got. <laughs> 